So welcome again. And we're going to see now uh, how many questions from past papers we can resolve in the case of radiation biophysics. And uh, let's get started with some, let's see what we have here, some relation analysis and true or false questions. And as always, I'd love for you to pause this video now and work on these two here and see if you can figure them out. Very good. Let's get started. I like to break this down. I see there's, there's quite a big statement here, so I'm just going to break it down here. Let's see. In the case of single target, single hit dose response curve, the irradiation dose of D37 damages all the target molecules. And really, this is, this, is, uh, this is well represented in the minimals, but basically all D37 means is that applying this dose, applying the dose of D37, is going to cause the surviving, surviving fraction to drop down to 37%, to 37%. So by definition, if you're applying this dose, you're not going to have all your, dam dam all your uh, molecules damaged. It's not going to happen. You're only going to have roughly 37% less. Or if you want 63, roughly 63 of your, um, of your target molecules already. So th this, would be, this would be false. This would be false. Very good. And this statement, at this dose, the expected number of ionizations in the radiosensitive volume of, of the target molecule is one. And this is also in the minimal. It's quite, quite complicated. I find it, or rather, I find it quite complicated to try and explain it intuitively. And I'm finding it quite easier to just remember that D37, D37 applied in a case of one, of one hit, one, in a, one hit causes inactivation. In this case, it corresponds, it corresponds to one hit in the radiosensitive volume. And it's really represented in the, in the uh, minimals as VD equals 1 in the case of D37. Uh, and one, one hit causes inactivation. So this is true. And really, it's just something that you kind of need to get in your mind. D37 and one hit, one inactivation is equivalent to one hit in the radiosensitive volume. Hopefully, hopefully, at least it resonates to a certain extent. I'm going to break down this statement here. Let's see. Indirect action of radiation may cause the inactivation of a target molecule. And really, we discussed this in the video. Indirect action of radiation is associated to, uh, to maybe inactivating a solute molecule using solvent molecules around it. So if in a indirect action of radiation is exactly causing the inactivation of target molecules, this is the definition. Because, let's see, two radicals may interact to form a more stable molecule. And I think this is more chemistry related, but we should really know that. If we have two OH radicals, which are, uh, which are the, most, the, the most radical radicals, they can form hydrogen peroxide. And this, this is actually not a radical. This is a, you could say it's not a stable molecule, but it's a more stable molecule than than these individually are. So this is true. Two radicals may interact to form a more stable molecule. This is true. But although these two are true, although these two are true, there's no relationship between them. So for those of you who are, who are keeping track of how to, how to mark those relation analysis, it would be a B. First statement true, second statement true, no relationship. Very good. Moving on. The molecule whose interaction causes cell death according to the molecular th theories, the RNA. And really, uh, by now, we should have an idea of what the difference is between RNA and DNA. But if we don't, it's not really important. But what's important to understand is the DNA. The DNA is the molecule in question when talking about uh, the molecular theory. This is the molecule's DNA. And that's in the minimals as well. Very good. Because double-strand break may occur due to two independent ionizing events. And this actually should, should uh, kind of bring you back to the examples that, uh, that I put forth where we, have, where we have one ionizing event causing the inactivation of both, one radiation passing through causing inactivation of both strands. And the same could be where, where one event causes an in, uh, inactivation of this strand, and maybe a formation of radical here, or maybe 
um, some sort of secondary ionization that causes inactivation. And these two are, are really one event. But it could happen due to d two different events causing inactivation of the molecule. So this is true. Two, uh, a double strand break may occur due to two independent ionizing events. True. Very good. And the first one we said is false. All right. True or false? The unit of gray is coulombs per kilograms. And this is kind of nitpicking, if you're asking me. But we need to know that uh, we need to know that absorbed dose absorbed dose is calculated in gray, and so is kerma. Kerma calculated in gray. And gray, really, because we're talking about absorbed dose of kerma, and they're talking about the change, they're talking about some sort of energy, energy released in the material. So we're talking about joule per kilogram. The coulombs per kilogram is for exposure, which is the change of charge for radiosensitive mass, or a kilogram, really. So this would be false. This would be incorrect. This would be incorrect. The presence of oxygen inversely affects radiation sensitivity. And really, when I see these things, these numbers, what I like to do is I, I just say oxygen, oxygen, you just write it here, and radiation sensitivity. And I'm wondering, OK, what happens if oxygen goes up, goes up? If there's more oxygen, then I may have more formation of oxygen-related radicals. So my radiation sensitivity would go up. So the more oxygenated my tissue is, the more it's going to be sensitive. So this is a linear relationship. When one goes up, the other goes up. So let's read it again. Oxygen and radiation sensitivity inversely affects. No, no, linearly, linearly affects. False. It linearly affects. That means that when oxygen concentration or the presence of oxygen goes up, my radiation sensitivity will also consequently go up. Very good. Moving on. And uh, right off the bat, I can tell you that this is quite, I, I collected as many as I could, and there's quite a lot to answer here. So again, I'd like you to take your time, pause the video, maybe take a break, and try and tackle these things. Try and tackle these things. Very good. Let's see if we can, uh, if we can make it happen. So I'm just going to, to just arbitrarily jump and describe these things without really noting them. And again, when we're talking about essay questions, just, just a summary, you need to, to have key words or key phrases in your definition. And this is how you're going to get scored, even if you're kind of missing some sort of link there, maybe. But if you have key words, you are going to be credited. Um, you are going to be credited. So direct action of radiation and indirect action of radiation. I can really define them together and say the direct action is an ionizing event that directly interacts with the molecule in, in its own uh, volume. An indirect action is maybe damaging or causing ionizing events that are going to cause secondary ionizing in my, uh, in my target molecule. Simply put, I can use radiation to cause radicals around my molecule of interest, and those radicals are going to interact with my molecule and causing possible inactivation. Radicals are just highly, res highly uh, responsive species uh, due to unpaired electrons. So this is very quite easy. Poisson distribution, if you're wondering why is it here, it's biostatistics. And I think I mentioned in my video, this relates to the target theory, target theory. Because the target theory is a very statistic, probabilistic theory. Uh, of my, what is my probability of getting certain amounts of hits in a radiosensitive volume? And the target theory is statistically associated with the Poisson distribution, in case you're asked. And here they actually did ask to describe it. And the idea with the Poisson distribution is it's a, it, in statistics, it's a discrete probability distribution. Basically, it calculates the probability of numbers of events occurring when you know a certain average. Uh, so this is, I would, I would say that the key words here are discrete probability distribution. If you have that, then you're good. Exposure. And exposure really, uh, it's represented in the minimals and in the lecture slides in different ways. But how I would really define it, just like the lecture slide, I would say that it's the, uh, other is the total of positive or negative charges that are generated by some sort of radiation, by some sort of ionizing radiation in a body unit mass during electron equilibrium. And it's important to express electron equilibrium, or you can say that the total uh, charges are at rest. Basically, the number of electrons going 
going into the material and the number of electrons going out, they stop moving and now I can measure the change in, uh, in charge. And I would also give its units charge over, over kilogram or coulombs over kilogram, obviously it's charge over mass. Quality factor, it's a way for us to characterize the extent of biological damage a radi or, uh, an ionizing radiation can have on biological systems. And this, this could be any, uh, t due to numerous, uh, numerous um, factors, I would mention let and penetrability just because, penetrability, just because these are the classics. Fractionation is basically the application of um, ionizing radiation on a material through, uh, through longer uh, time intervals. It's basically uh, breaking down the, radia the radiation events through longer time. And you can just uh, say, let's just say, just kind of like the idea of chemotherapy over, over long periods of time. Obviously, it's not chemotherapy, but you can just say um, cancer irradiation, like I'm trying to irradiate some sort of tumor. So I'm not going to do it all at once. I'm going to do it on some sort of time frame, wait a little while, and then maybe do it in another time frame. And this is really fractionation. I would say the key words is the application of the ionizing radiation over over long intervals of time or longer interval, intervals of time or breaking down the amount of time that you're applying certain radiation. All right. Explain briefly the main difference between direct and indirect action of radiation. I think we already covered this, but if we haven't or it wasn't clear, indirect action of radiation is due to the specimen being present or being surrounded by solvent molecules that can be generated or ionized into radicals and can affect directly the molecule. So direct is me hitting it, indirectly is me hitting uh, molecules around it causing radicals that may interact with it. An enzyme is available in two forms, dry and in an aqueous solution, which will be damaged more after exposure to the same amount of radiation under the same irradiating conditions. And really, if I have a dry sample and I have a wet, sa a wet sample and I apply a certain type a certain type, let's just say this is my radiation, this is my survivability curve, and I apply a certain dose, I apply a certain dose, I would expect the dry sample here to have more surviving elements than the wet, than the wet. Maybe the wet has less surviving elements. Maybe the wet has less, this is actually not, not very well represented. But let's say the wet is going to be, dry is going to be more, or rather, the wet is going to be more radio, radio sensitive. So they're going to die more easily. So the question which will be damaged more after exposure to the same amount, I would say the enzyme in the aqueous solution form is going to be damaged more after exposure to the same amount of radiation. And this, I believe, is also in the minerals represented at some point. Why is a well oxygenated tissue usually more radiation sensitive than a hypoxic one? And really, the presence of oxygen gives rise to specific radicals that can be formed in ionizing events. And those radicals can interact with the molecule. Even though I haven't damaged it directly with the ionizing radiations, those radicals formed by the ionizing events can interact with the molecule and cause inactivation. Very good, very good. And now we're getting into the favorite graph the department has in this specific topic. Let's see if we can tackle that. Plot the fraction of surviving object as a, fu as a function of dose if the object contains one target and one hit is sufficient to inactivate the target. Mark D37. This is not too bad. Oh, my drawings are pretty bad. So we're talking about dose, and we're going to put dose here, and the fraction of surviving elements. Very good. In case you're wondering, this is the number of elements I had to begin with, and this is the number of elements or molecules or whatever you want to call them that I have at the time of investigation. And this has to, has to start from one. Because at, at the beginning, before I started applying any radiation, if I had, let's say, 108, 108 molecules, before I started applying any radiation, all of those 108 are surviving at my point of inspection at time zero. So I'm going to start with one. Very good. And then what's important to know, if there's one hit, one inactivation, there's not going to be a shoulder. It's going to be a straight shoot down. 
and hopefully, uh, hopefully it made sense to you from the video because if we have, and this just goes back to the video, if we have a shoulder, that means it, it, there's more than one uh, hit in a radiosensitive volume that is going to require inactivation. And if that doesn't make sense to you, I, I recommend going through the video again. And really what's important is obviously not letting this touch, touch the x-axis. It shouldn't cross it. It should just be asymptotically approaching it. And uh, mark D37. Well, if this is 1, I'm going to put 0 0.37. And I'm just going to do this. Da, 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 da. And because D37 is dose, it's a dose I'm going to mark it here, this point. This is the D37 dose. D37. Perfect. All right. Now, explain why the expression describing the, sur the surviving fraction of cells containing two terms, one linear and one quadratic function of D, according to the molecular model of radiation sensitivity. And if you're reading this, you might be very overwhelmed by a very simple question. And this actually pertains to this, this, this thing. And this comes straight from the molecular theory lecture slide e to the negative alpha d plus alpha d, or rather beta here. You have beta, I'm just going to write it again, beta d to the second, very good. And really this describes, this describes, and I went into this slightly in, the, in my video, this describes the fraction of surviving elements as a function of the molecular theory, and this d represents a situation in which uh, one event, one event may cause inactivation, and this represents the case of two, two independent, independent events causing inactivation. And really, it's the, it's a quadratic relationship or a quadratic function, you can say, because it's less likely for two independent events to cause inactivation. We're talking about two events that are not related. Maybe one is going this way, and then one is going that way. And, one, and, and in a specific instance, I'm going to have two that are specifically aligned towards the specific same molecule that cause inactivation. So it's, it's less viable to occur. And this is why it's to the second degree. And if you're wondering, hey, if I put something to the second degree, its value is going to be more. So it, maybe it's going to be more probable. But remember, we have a negative sign here. So anything that is greater here is going to adversely affect the probability. And if you don't understand the probability concept, don't worry about it. All you really need to know is that this represents a situation in which two independent events cause double strand break. And this is an event where one event is causing double strand break. And this is less likely, and that's why it's to the second power. And if you understand that, then you're good. And this sufficiently answers this question. I realize these questions may not be as easy as you may have thought, but I picked up the most difficult I could to create some sort of challenge. So hopefully you gather some sort of intuition to this subject, and I'll see you in the next video.